All right, well, welcome back. Uh, thanks for joining me again to, uh, for this session. So in this session, what we're going to talk about is a lap around HTML development for Windows 8. Um, so my name, Mark Artiaga, and my contact information is there. So you can contact me on Twitter or via email. Um, and in this session, we're gonna talk about HTML development for Windows 8. We're gonna go do a little bit more of a deep dive, go into some of the controls, uh, some of the features that are available, um, not so much as uh, high level as the, the previous session that we just did. So right away, we're just gonna go straight into a demo. So I'm just gonna switch over here. And I'm gonna open up the Contoso cookbook application again. So in here, uh, we did a little bit, but I'll go through it again. Uh, just in case there are new people joining us. Um, but we, what we have is Visual Studio. So we have our WinJS type application, um, you know, using HTML, CSS3, uh, and JavaScript. Uh, and within Visual Studio, we have a great thing, great support like IntelliSense. Now Visual Studio is one of the, you know, the best development environments I've used for developing apps. Uh, I've developed on different uh, types of platforms. Uh, and I could say this is probably, this is one of the, the best one out there. It makes our lives as developers really, really easy. But essentially with IntelliSense, uh, you know, you have your IntelliSense support. Uh, you type in winjs dot and you get a dialog that shows you all the, um, all the methods, all the Pro namespaces and classes that are available. For example, if you wanna do the UI and you go in there and you see there's animation, there's app bar. So all the controls, animation library, everything is in there for you. Um, and if you're not familiar with it, it's a great way to, to familiarize yourself with the WinJS, uh, WinJS framework. Another way is again, uh, going through the source code. So there's CSS stylings, there's UI dark and UI light. Uh, you could go in there and you can see all the stylings. So your application will look like, uh, it will follow the modern UI um, style guidelines. And you know, you could go through it. I don't know how many lines of code it is, but right there we're at 2000. Obviously we don't have enough time, but there's a dark and a light and it set those styles um, for you accordingly within your default.html. Now in default.html, you set some WinJS uh, references. Um, these are files that are already built into Windows 8. Uh, so they don't ship with your application. So right now we're using the UI dark. We have base.js and UI.js, uh, which base is the base class library. And UI is things like controls and animations. And I showed you a little bit of that. Uh, and again, you get all the source code, uh, JavaScript. If you wanna go in there and see how things work, you can um, get yourself familiar with, with it. Um, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to run the application. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it straight in the simulator. Uh, so Visual Studio uh, does ship with a simulator. So you can get Visual Studio Express for Windows 8, uh, which is a free download. Uh, so you can start developing right away uh, for Windows 8. The only time that you're gonna have to pay is when you want to submit your application for certification. Uh, but you can get into programs like uh, BizSpark or if you're a student, DreamSpark uh, to, uh, and the store fee will be free for you. So here I'm gonna run it, I'm running the, the cookbook application again. And you notice I have breakpoints. So in this breakpoint, we have navigator.js. Navigator.js is a, just a standard file that gets created uh, by the navigation template. And it goes in and it creates a uh, application, a page, nav page control navigator, essentially, a class. Uh, it creates this class and creates some methods and properties. And where it set the breakpoint is update the back button. In here, it just goes in and it tries to find the back button using this query selector right here. Um, and if the back button is there, wires up the on click. And if it can navigate backwards, 
because we are using the navigation template. If it can navigate backwards, it's uh, going to remove the disable attribute on the button, which essentially will, will show the button. And if it can't go any further back, meaning that you're on the main page, uh, it's going to disable it. It's going to set the attribute, which will hide the, the button. So with Visual Studio, you can set all these breakpoints. I'll just go in and let it load up. So you can set all the breakpoints in there. Uh, you notice here the application loads up. In the simulator, what we have is um, we have a few emulation modes. So we have the mouse mode, where you could use the mouse to, uh, to scroll through uh, your application. So here we have a list of uh, recipes. Um, then we also have touch mode. So you could switch to touch mode, and you could simulate touch, and you could slide the, uh, slide the list left and right horizontally. And we also have pinch and zoom touch mode. So pinch and zoom touch mode, you know, if you have a picture in there, uh, you could uh, zoom in or zoom out the picture using this. Uh, and also rotation, say uh, if you want to rotate a picture or something like that. Uh, so you have all these simulation events in case you don't have a touch screen um, laptop or monitor. My home office, I have a touch screen monitor, so I, could, I can test the... Um, the touch support on a live machine and not the simulator. Now, my monitor back at the office is a 21 inch. So here, or 23 inch. So here you could go in the simulator as high as 27 inch, or you could go as low as um, 10 inch, uh, 1024 by 768. So I'm gonna change it to right here, 1920. So just give that a minute to change. And once that changes, you'll notice the application will automatically resize and scale out to that new resolution. And you see there. You also have other features such as set location. If you're using geolocation, you could set the, um, uh, the lat longs and things like that. And then copy screenshot. So copy screenshot is great when you're getting ready to submit your application and you need to take screenshots. Uh, you know, you just navigate through your app, click the button, and it'll take a screenshot of your application. Another thing I wanted to show you is the DOM Explorer. So DOM Explorer, if you're familiar with uh, web development or the developer tools in IE, uh, it's essentially the same thing. So I'm going to navigate to a page here. Uh, let me just get rid of these breakpoints. So there you see it shows us the recipe and the directions and you know everything we need to cook this thing. But say for example, you want to uh, debug some, here we go, say you want to debug some uh, CSS or something like that on the directions. So you use the select element and you notice there, I clicked on the element that I want to uh, debug and it takes me straight into that element. Now on the right side, you have all your styles that are set. So you could go in here and you could debug all these styles. Uh, you could trace the styles. You could see where the actual color is being set from. So you see here it's being set from default.css. And you could change it you know, to be the default from uidark.css. And if we go back to our app, you notice that the text is no longer visible, uh, which is not good. So we'll, we'll bring that back. You could check your layout see any of the padding, margin, borders, and offsets, and any attributes. And you could uh, manually add attributes if you want to set a style um, in here. You could do that. Uh, and you could change these, uh, these styles in here. You could also go in and change the actual HTML. And you see here it changes it to test, and you get a live preview of that in there. Uh, the JavaScript console is another one you want to be familiar with. So the JavaScript console allows you to, um, without being paused in the debugger, uh, you could go in there and you could, uh, you could write some JavaScript straight here. So here I just wrote a console.log and it, it wrote test out to the console. Uh, but what you could also do is you could new, I'm going to show a dialog box here windows.ui.popups.message.txt. 
dialog. I'm going to set our and show async. Message dialog does return a promise. It's an asynchronous operation. Um, so once I run that, it'll show our, our dialog box here. So I will close it. And we could extend that to say once it's done, we want to run a function that says console.log this missed. So I run that, I close it, and once it's the dialog box, we hit the close button, the dismiss function or the console.log that we have in our function runs. So you definitely want to get familiar with, uh, that's called a promise, um, uh, winjs.promise. Uh, you do want to get familiar with the async operations and what's available there. Um, Visual Studio also ships with Blend. So I am going to open this up in Blend. So if you've used Blend before, you've probably used it in uh, C Sharp or XAML type applications. But now with uh, Visual Studio 2012 and the Windows, um, the Windows SDK, uh, Blend ships with HTML support and it's all available for free. So I'm just gonna let this load up here and I'll quickly show some of the features. We don't have enough time to go through all the features, but there's some uh, key things that I, I would wanna show you. And it'd be good once you start uh, designing your application. So you definitely wanna use Blend for design, uh, setting your CSS or anything like that, and then Visual Studio for your development. So as it's loading here, it's gonna load up an actual, um, the actual page. You'll see here we, we are on default.css and it is using the navigation template. So let me adjust. All right, so here is default.css. Uh, here are all our styles. There we go. Uh, all our styles that are available. And one of the key things that you should be aware of are right here. Now I'm running on a small resolution, so a little bit hard, but you can navigate all your styles. Say for example, the content host, which hosts all our content um, as we navigate from page to page. Uh, we have a live DOM right here. So if we select an item, uh, there's our content host. We select an item and you can see the live DOM is in here. The other thing you want to know about is interactive mode. Interactive mode allows you to actually run the application uh, within your, uh, within Blend. So it gives you a live representation of what your app will look like when it's running on the, on your desktop or within the simulator. So here I'm just gonna click this and you notice, how, you know, we get all the animations, all the navigation events, everything starts going and we want to style this page. Say we want to style the item detail page. We turn off interactive mode. And then we go back in and I'm going to select the ingredients. And you notice how up here, it's going to say the selected content is part of item detail page. So now item detail page got loaded into our uh, content host. And you notice our live DOM has been updated with all those details. So in here, we can now go in and we could change the attribute for that. So I'm going to change the, the up here, you see the applied style rules. Uh, I will change the text to blue. And you notice all the text turns to blue because it's sending the content host, uh, the style, the color style it's sending it to that blue. So everything around here has now changed to blue. And we'll go back to interactive mode. And you notice everything is blue. We go back, everything is blue here and also here. So definitely, uh, you know, you wanna get familiar with Blend. Uh, again, we don't have enough time to go through all the features of Blend, but when you're developing your application, 
you want to develop and write your code in Visual Studio, and then you want to uh, design your application and set the styles and everything within uh, Blend. So now we'll go back and go through the rest of it. So Windows 8 development tools, HTML. So what you get, again, you get Visual Studio and you get Expression Blend. So Visual Studio, you get the code editor with IntelliSense. You do get UI designers, but you know Blend is a little bit better. If you want to go into the straight uh, raw CSS or HTML, you can do that. Uh, sometimes I do a combination of both. Uh, use the expression blend to set some designs, but sometimes I just need to do things uh, a little bit quicker within the, um, the raw CSS files or HTML. I find myself doing both uh, you know, and switching every so often. Uh, but Visual Studio, you get the JavaScript console, you get the simulator, um, you get the DOM Explorer, debuggers, and expression blend. Um, you do have the interactive mode, which is really great. You get the live, uh, the live DOM, the CSS editors and all those things. Uh, the CSS editor is really great if you're not familiar with CSS. Um, it, it'll allow you to get familiar with all the CSS attributes that are available to you. The best part about it, the development tools are free. So again, you could download Visual Studio Express for Windows 8 and you will get Visual Studio, and you will get Expression Blend, and you can start building your applications right away. And I was using Visual Studio Ultimate. Um, if you're on a higher SKU, it just works. You know, you, you'll still be able to use Ultimate. Uh, you just download the SDK, and things uh, could be off and running. So now, building apps. So building apps with HTML and JavaScript, you're using the WinJS library, the Windows library for JavaScript. Uh, the whole goal of the library was to allow developers to, who are familiar with HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript to be able to bring their apps quickly or their, their web apps quickly to the Windows 8 platform. Um, WinJ, the WinJS library allows you to, uh, to use existing style guidelines, so it gives you a bunch of controls that are available. Uh, it's designed for touch, uh, which is key because Windows is, uh, is a touch-first environment, uh, but it also works with pen, and it also works with uh, mouse and keyboard uh, inputs. So all the controls handle that for you. Um, and it also scales across the different form factors. So Windows uh, will come in a variety of form factors. So I'm running Windows 8 on a laptop, but you could also run it on a tablet, such as a Surface. Um, and so you, you want to make sure you build for the different resolutions that are available in your uh, it, out there for, di for the users in Windows 8. Um, again, it allows you to build fast. So if you're familiar with web technologies, uh, you should be good to go. Um, and using the interactive tools such as Expression Blend uh, to get things done a little bit faster. Or if you're not familiar with Expression Blend, you could just go into the raw CSS and Visual Studio, CSS and HTML, and away you go. So what's available in WinJS? Some of the key things are the, the helpers for namespaces and classes uh, definitions. Um, you you want to use those to help organize your JavaScript a bit into, into classes, and then your class could have methods and properties. And uh, it's a simulation of, of uh, classes. Um, you know, you do want to use those. It helps you organize. Uh, promises, uh, async operations, you want to get familiar with those. Anything over 50 milliseconds in the Win, uh, Windows runtime uh, will return a promise. Uh, for exam example, file operations, a message dialog, um, those things will return promises, or even HTTP, XML HTTP requests uh, will return a winjs.promise. Uh, the app model, the app model is basically your suspend and resume. Uh, you do want to get familiar with those so you can save state and reload state. Uh, the navigation model, so you can navigate between pages within your app. Um, and then you have things like data binding, controls, uh, templates, and utilities. So the utilities are there if you want to query elements within the DOM. Animations is really key. Uh, you want to get familiar with the winjs.ui.animations library. Uh, it has a bunch of pre-built animations into uh, the WinJS 
uh, library that you can leverage so your application can use the same animations that Windows uses. Um, and you don't have to rebuild those animations. And again, the default styles, CSS styles are there, light and dark, and it uses the modern, it'll make your application, you know, leverage the modern UI and look like a Windows 8 application. So now to some of the controls. So some of the everyday controls that we have um, our button check boxes, combo boxes, sliders, time pickers. Now, to be aware, it's some, something you need to be aware of is Microsoft didn't go out and create some, you know, some new elements and some new tags in HTML, saying you know, a button tag or a round button or something like that. Basically, it's a button element, uh, for example, and then you see a round one with the arrow. That's the back button. That's styled by CSS and the border, the rounded borders, and all that. The um, CSS attributes allow you to do that. Uh, checkboxes is a standard checkbox, list box, uh, slider is a, um, is a range control. Uh, so you have all these controls that are available and they're standard HTML uh, elements. So there's, it's not custom uh, you know, Microsoft type elements, it are, they are HTML5 elements that are available to you. So now presenting data, uh, there's two main things that you're gonna be, use, uh, be using uh, potentially to present your data. So you're going to be using the list view control or the flip view control. And the list view control you're going to have in list layout uh, or grid layout. List layout you're going to be most likely using it in snap mode or uh, in portrait mode. Um, and grid layout you're going to use it in fill or landscape mode. Uh, so those are the two different layouts for list view and presenting different, uh, different data uh, to your users. Uh, the other one is flip view. So flip view, you have the option to kind of say flip through a bunch of images. So the great thing about all these controls is they support touch. Uh, so if for the flip view, for example, you could swipe left and right. Uh, they support the mouse and they also support uh, keyboard navigation, uh, which is great. So just because people are still gonna be using a keyboard and mouse potentially on some uh, in some environments, um, and they won't have touch available. Out of the box, everything is available to you and built out already. So the controls, how do we get, uh, get them set up? So a WinJS list view, basically step one is declare your HTML. And you set your, it's essentially a div, your data win control, winjs.ui.listview, and then you set some options for the list view. So these are, you know, custom Windows attributes. It's still a div, um, and it's going to create a control. And how the control gets created is through the winjs.ui.processall. So what this does is it goes into your DOM, and it looks for any data-win-control attributes in any elements, and if it finds it, it's going to process that and it's going to generate HTML within there to generate, say, for example, the list view or the app bar or anything like that. And then to use a control in your JavaScript, you basically you can do a get element by ID for the list. You pass it the ID, use a win control property, and then you could add event listeners uh, such as selection change and give it your function parameter. Uh, how you want to handle the selection change event. So pretty, um, pretty straightforward to use. Now data binding is again very, is pretty straightforward also. Uh, if you've done data binding in XAML or Silverlight, uh, it would be essentially the same except instead of using XAML, you are using uh, HTML. So the first thing you need to do is declare your template. Uh, so we have our class there, our item template, and set it up as a data win control as a winjs.binding.template. And then we have our, within there, we have our item, which is going to be uh, define how our item is going to look within our uh, application, within our list view. And then the second step is to set the UI options. So you can set the, the options either in HTML or you could set it in the JavaScript. Here, uh, in this example, we've set it up in the JavaScript, the data template. So we set the options of the list view to item template, and then we query the selector. So it's just a simple query selector that we send in. And then uh, on item invoked, we want to pass in a function to say, when an item gets invoked, run this method or this function. 
Semantic Zoom. So Semantic Zoom allows you to, uh, to group items. So it's a great way to use um, uh, pinch to zoom of a list. So if you want to group items, for example, in this one, uh, the zoomed in mode is showing all the, um, all the event details and zoomed out is showing it by day and what times are available. So you definitely want to leverage semantic zoom if you have a lot of data uh, within, your, within your list. Uh, and it's just a, be a nice way to group your, your data for your application and for your users to navigate around. Then we have commanding surfaces. So commanding surfaces are basically surfaces that go on top of your main application, such as the app bar, a settings pane, a flyout, um, a message dialog. So you want to look at, uh, you, you want to leverage these controls, especially the app bar. Uh, you don't want to go ahead and create your own. So you want to use the winjs.ui.app bar. Uh, you can set that in the HTML and it, you know, away you go. Context menu, if you, uh, you know, you have a right click or tap and hold, you want to bring up a context menu. You want to use uh, what's uh, the controls that are available to you and leverage those so you could get, get up and running faster. So now we'll switch back over and we'll show you a demo. I'll show you a demo on the controls that are available. So all these, all these demos are actually available from the Windows SDK. Um, and you could download them all yourself uh, from the samples, uh, the samples SDK. So I'm going to run this. Here you see it pop up. So here's the Windows SDK. And these are the, this is the Essentials Control sample. So basically here, it just goes through 14 different samples of controls. For example, the range control, uh, which is your slider. Uh, you know, you have your horizontal and you have your vertical just by setting a class attribute right there. You can set the custom step. Uh, there we have four, here we have any. Uh, and you can even style it uh, differently. So if you want to change the fill color, uh, you can do that. You can set tick markers and you could even change the entire representation of the slider. So here we have a, a slider, which uh, probably could be used for, for volume or anything like that. Um, and it's all done in CSS. And I'll go through how this one, this one works. Uh, but you also have other examples such as a multi-touch equalizer sample using the range control. So here, if you have a touch monitor, you could, um, depending on how many touch points is supported, you can move all of these uh, sliders at, one, at the same time. We have progress indicators in here. So again, these are uh, standard HTML uh, attributes. So we have um, indeterminate, we have, you could customize the CSS, you could make it bigger or smaller. And let me scroll back up. And checkboxes, again, those are just simple checkboxes. You can customize the checkboxes right here. Here it's using an SVG as the background. Uh, and here it's using the indeterminate and check states uh, for a uh, like or dislike rating type thing. And of course, all the, all the ratings for this are gonna be here, right? Um, radio buttons. So I'm not gonna go through all of them. Uh, what I do wanna show you is the range control and how this is essentially set up. So the range control and the way most of the samples are set up are HTML and JS files. And here we have range intro, HTML. And just gonna scroll to the bottom. Here's the customized range control. So you see it's just an input of type range. Uh, we set a, a the idea of steps and step any. And then we go into the CSS and range intro. And this is the CSS that is set. So you notice the thumb is changed to an image. So images slash steps slash thumb.png. And it sets some other attributes in there. On the hover, it changes to the thumb hover. Uh, when it's active, it changes that. 
all CSS. There's actually no JavaScript to change the styling of the range control. So you do have that. Um, it's, it's the power of the uh, CSS3 and the, the, the runtime. And here you notice there's no JavaScript code to actually change the styles. So all we're doing is changing the look and feel. Uh, and not any extra JavaScript code. It's all done through CSS and HTML to customize the look and feel of a range control. And you could do that to pretty much all the controls that are available. So now, those are controls, and I didn't show you some of the app bars, but the app bars are, are available also. Next, we'll go through some of the Windows 8 animation libraries. So here, you want to get familiar with these because the animation library uh, under winjs.ui.animations are preset and pre-built to be able to allow your application to look like, uh, to use the same animations that the Windows Core OS uses. So it has all the, uh, the frames, all the, uh, the transitions, everything is pre-built so you don't have to go and build that again. Um, so you do definitely want to use those animations in there. So what you have in some scenarios is, for example, navigation. Uh, you have enter and exit page. Uh, you have content if you want to switch between content. Um, you know, you have enter content, exit content, peak, expand, collapse, uh, reveal, hide UIs. You know, if you want to show a side panel or, or a top panel, um, you want to look at those. Um, We'll actually go through an animation demo instead of me just uh, talking about it because it makes it a little bit easier. So I'm going to load that up. Just give that a second. All right. So I'm going to run it. in a minute while it deploys. So you see down here it's deploying. It's going to deploy to my local machine. So this is the Animation Library JS sample. Again, available on the MSCN, the Windows SDK samples. And here I'm just going to run a few animations. So you notice here we have 22 different ones. Uh, so you have run animation. So you notice how everything kind of slides in nicely. Uh, transitions uh, between pages. So we're going to animate to a sample page. And, you know, and then click to return. So we have enter and exit content. Um, here again, we have show content. And I'll show you some of the list ones. Add and remove from a list. So you, you have these nice animations. You definitely want to uh, leverage what's available. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but I will show you some of the um, show panel right here. So let me run the show panel. I didn't show that one. And then I'll show you the code of how that works. So show panel right here is a panel to the left. So you have a panel. It's going to slide out. It looks like the settings or the charms or anything like that. You have that nice navigation or the nice animation effect. You know, come in and slow down the animation, and then you could hide it. And how do we get that going? So in, in the sample, what it does, it just adds a... Um, uh, run animation, add event listener. So it adds a click to the button. And then we uh, do the animating. So animating. And right in here is the main thing. So winjs.ui.animation.show panel. Pass it the element that you want to show. And to hide panel, winjs.ui.animation.hide panel. Other thing to be aware of is these things return uh, promises. So you do have a, uh, you can do a done uh, and function like that. So it does return a promise. So if you want to hide the panel, so once the panel is hidden, uh, if you want to run something after that, you can do that. 
So there's a bunch of code in there. These are all the different animations that are available. Uh, you definitely want to leverage those and get familiar with them. And then your application will look like, um, will feel like it's part of the platform, the Windows 8 platform. So the next one we're going to look at is hardware. So Windows uh, desktop, Windows devices, they come with various hardware, um, and we have APIs to leverage that hardware. For example, we have webcam and microphones. So you can use the windows.media.capture, and there's two ways to capture media. So you can use the camera capture UI, or you can use the media capture. Camera capture UI is pre-built. Um, it's external to your application. It comes with the SDK. Um, and it's a lot easier to use. Media capture, you could essentially embed a uh, media element, a video element, and you could show the, you could show a live stream of the video within your application. Uh, there's various encodings that is supported. Um, media capture is a little bit more complicated to use, and you'll notice by the, by the demo that we're gonna do next. So the first one we're gonna do is camera capture. So camera capture, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to call use the camera capture dialog and we're going to call it, say we want to capture some audio or video and then uh, show, the, or show the picture or the video within our application. So I'm just going to run this. So there you see it running. And again, this is a camera capture UI JavaScript sample from the Windows SDK. So I'm going to capture a photo from the webcam. So the first thing it's going to do, it's going to ask you, it's going to ask the user if the app is allowed to use the webcam and the microphone. So we're going to allow it. It's going to turn my camera on and We're going to go down here, and we're just going to say OK. So there's the picture. It got captured. you notice there. And then the webcam is essentially the same. So this is going to actually capture some video. Uh, so I'm just going to say here as I'm talking, and then it's going to save it. You have the option to trim it. And I'm going to say OK. And then it's going to play the video. So that is a quick way to capture a picture or capture some video, audio and video using the, your webcam. To do it, here I'll just show you very quickly the capturevideo.js. And again, you could download this sample and go through it. Uh, but the main thing you're going to be looking at is the window, windowsmedia.capture.cameracaptureui. Uh, and all you're going to do is, for example, in the video, you're going to set the format. We're going to say it's MP4, and then we're going to capture file async. So it's an async operation that is happening. Um, so when it's done, you want to make sure the file is available. If there's no file, we're just going to log it. If there's an error, we're going to log it. You probably want to expand on that code. And then we're going to create a object URL to our video blob and then set the video blob URL to our video element. And that video element is a standard HTML video tag that we've placed right here. So again, very straightforward. The code is not overly complicated to do this. Um, and you could get up and running fairly quickly. Now, if you want more functionality, um, you know, you can use the Media Capture API, uh, which it gets a little bit more complicated. So again, this sample is available on MSDN. So I'm going to start it up. Uh, this sample goes through um, a C++, has a C++ project in it, and also has a WinJS project. So you can mix and match C++ with WinJS. So if you're familiar with it, uh, what they've done in this sample is they have a grayscale transform. Uh, so it will transform the actual um, video stream into grayscale uh, if the checkbox is clicked. And I'm not going to go through the C++. 
um, you know, you're, you're more than welcome to, to go through it. Um, but the media capture, I will run this one. And it's going to have to build the, the C++ project. So that does take a little bit more time. Uh, but while it's doing that, it might have been already cached. All right. So here we're going to start device. It's going to ask us if we're allowed to use it. We're going to say yes. Uh, and then we're going to start a preview. So we have a preview here. And then you can start recording. And then I'm going to stop recording. And then you see me there talking. And then we could also take a photo. So here you're integrated. You're streaming straight in, inside your application. And you're not going outside the application. Um, you could enumerate all the cameras that are available. For example, here I only have one camera. I could start the device and start preview. And this is where the grayscale effect comes in. So you could click that and it could, it'll transform it to grayscale only. It's going to take a picture. And then you could also record audio straight within uh, your application uh, using the, the microphone, if a microphone is available. Now, I'm just going to quickly go over the basic capture. Uh, basic capture, essentially, uh, we're going to do a, it's going to go in scenario.initialize. It's going to initialize all our buttons that we need. And then the core of the code is in init capture settings. Init capture settings, we're going to init a Windows media, windows.media.capture.media capture initialization settings. And we're going to get that going. And then on the buttons, we're going to start device. So as you can see, it's a little bit more uh, involved to get things going. Here you have to initialize async. Once it's initialized, then you could actually go in and you could start recording. Uh, you could get cameras so right here. A little bit more code to do it. You could record. But in the end, the elements that you're using in HTML are essentially video tags and image tags. And these are standard HTML tags. Uh, so, you know, nothing, nothing custom other than the media capture APIs that are available with the Windows SDK or the WinJS library. So, two different ways to capture media. Uh, you, you know, if you want to use a camera capture API, you could use media element or you could use uh, that. So touch platform. So Windows 8 was designed to be a touch first uh, environment. So what they've what Microsoft has done is they've unified the touch, the mouse and the pen into a single pointer API. So this allows uh, to it allows you as a developer to more easily develop your code so you don't have to figure out if it's a mouse or if it's a pen or if it's if it's a person using their finger and if you code for touch first you get a mouse and pen for free which is which is great so the main thing you're going to have to look at here is the ms pointer so this is not um this works in the ie browser doesn't work in other browsers and it also works in the you know it's going to be available in windows 8 obviously since it's the IE 10 engine that's in there. So you're going to have your, your mouse pointer down, mouse pointer up, hover. Uh, all those things are going to be available. Uh, pointer events, it, they behave essentially similar to mouse events. Uh, it's derived from the same event class and bubbles up into, uh, into the JavaScript. And commonly used events, you know, you have your pointer type. Uh, you, you, you get to know if it's a touch, if it's mouse, or if it's pen. And you get to know the position, uh, you know, using the coordinate system. It also passes you a contact ID. Uh, so you know which contact uh, or, or which mouse movement is happening or touch movement. So let's go into here. And we'll show a, another sample. Let me get rid of this media capture. So as this loads up, what this sample does, it essentially, it's a canvas type application. Um, 
and you, it allows you to use your fingers or your mouse or your pen to actually draw on a canvas. So Canvas is a new HTML5 uh, element that's available, and it is available in your Windows 8 application also. You can use it, and it allows you to draw directly to, a, to the Canvas using uh, JavaScript. Main thing to know, here's our styles. MS Touch Action, you want to set on the canvas to none, so that way all the events get bubbled up into your code. And then the canvas paint, uh, the canvas paint.js is actually all the code that gets done. So here, you notice we use our canvas. Uh, canvas, I'll add event listeners, so we add all our event listeners right here for MS Pointer down, move up, uh, hover, or sorry, over, out and cancel, and we send it into our canvas handler in here. Canvas handler will figure out which pointer ID, so you notice here we're using a pointer ID. Uh, we have a list of brushes, and then it just creates a new brush tool object. So the brush tool object handles all the MS pointer down, MS pointer over, move, uh, it handles all that uh, all those events, and basically it captures an X, Y, and figures out if it should uh, request an animation frame. Uh, and then the animation handler, and that goes into here. This is where we draw straight on the canvas, on the context, on the 2D context. Um, this is standard HTML, so you want to do context up, begin path, move to, line to, stroke, and you want to set the, uh, the previous X and Y values of the brush. And I'll show you exactly what this code accomplishes. I'll just run it. It's going to run on the simulator here. Just give it a second to load up. There we go, and again, it's a Windows SDK sample, WinJS sample. And here, you notice I'm in uh, mouse mode. So I'm just gonna use my mouse to draw on the canvas. But you could also go in touch mode. So touch mode, uh, let me change the color so you can see it. Here's touch mode. And you notice everything gets drawn. So either I'm using a pen or I'm using a uh, touch or I'm using a mouse, everything will still get you, uh, everything will still get bubbled up into your JavaScript using the MS Pointer events. So the key takeaway there is use the MS Pointer events that are available and you get, you know, code for touch first and you get pen and uh, mouse for free uh, and less code for you essentially to develop. So now we're going to go through quickly uh, tiles and notifications. Um, basically you want to use these to, uh, to make your apps a little bit more interactive and alive. Uh, so tiles and notifications allow you to um, set different statuses on your tile, on your start screen. Uh, for example, you could set a badge, or you could uh, you could set a badge as a number or as a glyph. Um, it supports square or Y tiles, uh, so you could you know you, you probably want to support both uh, just to make your application uh, a little bit better for your user. And these are the different types of tiles. You know, pretty self-explanatory. These are the wide ones. So you notice here we have a picture with a with a uh, glyph and a. Uh, a number on it, so, such as a you know unread messages, or these are new pictures that are available. Uh, this is a different type of tile template. Here's another one where you have a picture and then some uh, some text describing the picture. And you notice they all animate, and Windows will handle the animation for you if you wanted to animate. Toast notifications are another way to deliver. Um, messages to your users, toast notifications will and tiles will run while your application is not running. So it's a great way to keep your users engaged with your application. Um, toast notification will pop up on the right top right corner of the screen. Uh, it'll show your app icon. 
Um, and if the user clicks on it, it will navigate to a rel uh, relevant page dependent on what type of uh, Toast notification you show. So you could set all those attributes in there. So here are some examples of uh, some of the options that are available. Uh, so you have um, you know, your, your icon and you have some text, but you could also add some, uh, an image in there. So different templates that are available for Toast notifications. So now, we'll just quickly jump in to Toast notifications. And I'm going to open up the, uh, the cookbook, cookbook sample again. So let's just slow it up. All right, so Toast notifications, uh, what, where we run it is in the item details page. So I'm going to run the application. Start it up here. Start up. And I'm going to go into a recipe, and I'm going to set a reminder. So in the reminder, this is essentially how we're going to set a toast notification. So it's going to be in notify, and notify is basically a reference to uh, windows.ui.notifications. So that is where uh, the main uh, classes for notifications are going to exist. And here we're going to call Toast Notification Manager Create Toast Notifier. So our notifier, we want to make sure that the settings are available, are enabled. Um, if they're not enabled, it's not going to work. So you want to, you want to make sure you check for that. And then we go in and we get a Toast template. We set the text. And here we're just sending the simple text to Reminder. And then we're going to schedule the Toast notification to appear five seconds from now. So in here we say the date. Uh, we pass in the notify that schedule toast notification to the template and date and notifier dot add to schedule. So I'm just going to continue running this code and then I'm going to go to the start screen and then you see the reminder comes up and we could go straight into the application. So now what I could also do is I could pin this recipe. So we could pin it to the, to the start screen. And you see here, at the end, we have it pinned, and we are good to go. So that, that's how we pin, and then we could go straight into the, that recipe if we've pinned it. So that is essentially Toast Notifications. Uh, very straightforward to do, uh, just a few lines of code to get that going. Uh, so you definitely want to use those. You can run those in background tasks uh, to, to notify your users, or you could schedule uh, toast notifications, say, if you set the timer uh, on the recipe. Uh, you could definitely schedule those notifications to, uh, to start or to notify the person, hey, your, your food is actually done. So the next one is Windows push notifications. And... Here, if, if you've developed for, uh, for Windows Phone, uh, you'll be f familiar that push notifications are very similar to, um, uh, to Windows 8. Uh, basically, it allows you to, from a remote server, send a tile or toast notification over the internet to the device. And you could, it, it's a great way to keep engaged with your users and to get them to keep using your app. Uh, for example, I mean, if you're using, if you have a free app and it has ads, it's a great way to keep them opening your app uh, using um, tile and toast notifications. Um, and just keep them engaged with your application. Uh, so the push notifications that come with window, Windows 8 are a free service to use. So just be aware that you don't have to pay for it. Uh, it's free to all developers that are developing for it. And it scales out, runs on, uh, on Windows Azure, and it could scale out to millions of users uh, in your application once you get there. So quick overview on push notifications. 
Um, essentially, you're going to you're going to subscribe to the notification client platform within Windows 8 uh, from your from your app, and then that's going to send you some data that you want to then store on. Um, you want to register to your own cloud service, so you want to store these values. It's going to send you a URL, uh, a URI, uh, some keys and things like that. You want to make sure you store those up in your uh, server, so then you could run something on the server side, um, you know, so say for example a reminder or a uh, order notification or anything like that. Uh, you could run that on the cloud. And then that cloud, your cloud service, will push to the Windows Push Notification Service, um, the WNS, and then that will push into the Windows 8 client, and then which will eventually either show a tile or a toast, and then will uh, push into your Windows app. So push notifications, we will quickly go through that demo. This is another sample application that it's available. Uh, so I, I will leave it up to you to uh, to download it and to play with it. Here I'll just run it really quick. So in this application, uh, what we have now is we have our sample. So here's our tile. I'm just going to scroll it to the left. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to send a tile notification with text. So here's the text that it sent. And then you're going to see that's going to change. So it's just a hello world notification. That's our first notification. Uh, you want to send the tile notification with a local image. That's the text that you're going to send. And then that'll switch. So here's the text that we send. The image is just a red box. Uh, and then there's a bunch of different uh, notifications that you could send. Uh, you could send a badge. Uh, you could send a number, say, 99, we'll send a badge notification. And this should switch, so you'll see the 99 come up. And then you could also send a glyph. So we could say there's a new message. And we'll send the badge notification there. And it changes to a new message. So similar to the mail app uh, that's available. Uh, so you, you have all that functionality. Any animation, um, that you that that you send in there will essentially be handled by the Windows uh, the Windows operating system. Now to send a tile uh, a local image notification, this is essentially your code. So you're going to this this sample does use a C sharp, so you can integrate C sharp with uh, WinJS. Um, but essentially, it's going to create a tile content factory. Uh, it's going to say a tile wide image and text. You're going to set the text, you're going to set your image source, and you're going to create your tile right over here. So send the notification, windows.ui.notifications.tileUpdateManager, and create tile updater for application, update. And then tile content, create notification. And that's going to send it in, and it's going to create. So just a few lines of code. You definitely want to leverage these uh, notification extensions, um, which is C-sharp, uh, which is fine. Uh, you can call it, as you can see here, you can call it in from uh, a WinJS application and reference it uh, from within your app. So that is essentially notifications. So contracts. Are next. So contracts essentially allow you to integrate directly and more with the uh, with the Windows 8 operating system. So you have things like search, share, settings, play to, app to app picking. So one of the main ones that are used are search, search and share. And essentially, search is universally available within Windows 8. So you could search. Um, uh, apps that you have installed. You could search uh, contextually within applications. Uh, for example, here, here's the search anatomy of uh, when the search is open. So number one, you notice there, we have the search box is scoped to the main screen. So for example, here it's for Bing. So as you start typing, uh, query suggestions, so autocompletes uh, start happening. And it will also list a, 
the installed applications, the installed Windows Store apps that have implemented the search contract. So if you implement the search contract, it gives your application a little bit more exposure to the user and it, may show, and it will show up in the, um, the list of installed apps. And then there's uh, suggestions provided by the main app on the screen. And then implementing search is actually pretty straightforward. So the easiest way is to go add new item search contract in Visual Studio. Um, and then that, what that'll do is it'll create a Windows.Search extension in the category. And then the second step is just to handle the events. So you want to say on query submitted. Uh, so when the query is submitted, you want to search your actual data. And then on suggestions requested, you want to give it the uh, autocomplete list that's available. So I will show you a quick demo of searching. And again, it's back in the uh, Contoso cookbook. So let me just open this up. And search is right here. Uh, so in the sample application, which you can download, you're going to have your search, uh, search CSS, uh, search HTML, search JS. These are standard. You're going to open up search JS, and there's going to be a lot of code. There's basically a few things that you have to do. You'll find the to-dos. Uh, here you, you could uh, do filters. Uh, when an item is invoked, you could uh, you navigate to the page that you want to navigate to. And then towards the bottom, you're going to have your two on query submitted. You want to say nav.navigated to the search page URI. And then on query on suggestions requested, you're going to give some suggestions depending on what they're typing. Um, and then the other thing is sharing. So I will go through sharing in the next demo, but let me run this. very quickly. So here's our, you know, same application. We're going to, uh, we're going to go back in here and we're going to search and say uh, fried within our Contoso cookbook. So you notice here, this is a standard uh, search charm that comes up. Um, and we're going to say, we searched. It's going to give us our, you know, so our history that we've done. And we select, we want to search in the, in the cookbook application. And it sends us our values. So here we have our fried rice, fried dumplings, some chicken, and the categories that they're under. So we'll go search. And again, you could do it from here. And we do rice. And we have a little bit more rice, uh, rice options in here. So search, you definitely want to do it. It gives a little bit more exposure to your application. Um, you could search from outside your application. So if your application is not running, uh, you will still have the option to run this search code um, and give a little bit more exposure to your app. So the next one is sharing. Definitely another one you want to implement so you could share things. Um, Windows 8 does a lot of the heavy lifting to share between apps. Um, you could implement a share source. Uh, so you could uh, actually share things out or you could receive shared items. For example, the mail app will receive, uh, you could share with the mail and then you could send the mail out. And I will go through that demo in the same Contoso cookbook. For example, if we want to share the carrot salad, I'm going to share here. And here you see you have the options right now that I have are mail and SkyDrive. So I will share with mail, and what it does do is it saves any previous emails that you've sent, for example. Uh, so I would just email it to myself. 
and here's the the title and your message and then you send it off and then you are good to go and then you're done how do you share pretty easy in the item details on data requested that's our function that handles sharing and let me just do that to show you where it comes from so uh, DTM is essentially Windows application dot data transfer uh, dot data transfer manager. So that's our data transfer manager. For the current view, you want to add an event listener to data requested, and on data requested, you want to set your sharing properties. So here you can share a photo, you can share a video, uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to share the uh, the recipe. So you share the recipe, you set the description, uh, you give it the, the, you set up the text for the recipe, so you set text. So here we just do the ingredients and directions. And then you want to set a image, if you want to put an image in there. And then you're done. So here you set the, uh, you got to give it a URI, so you got to save it to local and give it a URI, and it'll embed it within your uh, within the email uh, that is available. So you set the bitmap in there, and that's it. The other thing to remember is when you navigate away from the page, you want to remove event listener of data requested. Um, this way, that if you go to another page that implements sharing, uh, it will be allowed to share um, within the data request manager. So sharing is pretty pretty straightforward to implement. Uh, you definitely want to do it. Uh, so you could uh, share between apps and share data between apps, such as a mail app, and give those extra features to your users to to send out their data. So it's uh, very easy to leverage the Windows 8 platform, take advantage of the modern hardware, uh, and create some immersive apps with uh, HTML. Of WinJS on Windows 8. Um, you definitely want to integrate with the platform such as the sharing and search contracts, tile notifications, push notifications, um, and leverage WinJS. Uh, you know, it's there, the controls, the styles, the CSS, um, it's all there for you to create your uh, to create your applications. And with that, we're going to take a break. Again, if you have uh, questions, you can hit me up on Twitter or email me. Um, but, you know, come back for the next session, we'll just take a small break.